guys, welcome to my channel. This is Morgan and today I'm going to be talking about some books that make me cry. So if you know me in real life, you know that I'm like an emotional bitch and um, movies and TV shows and books and music like make me cry all the time. And I thought it would be fun and kind of funny to talk about some of the times when books like really just like destroyed me emotionally because that's like some of my favorite books and I just think it would be fun. So to start off, I want to talk about what happened last night. So I just read Fangirl. Here we are and uh, I've been crying for like an hour and it'd be like that sometimes. Clearly I have my life together. <laughs> no, but I was reading Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and I just the whole entire second half of the book, really, I just cried my way through it. And so this is the book that's going to kick us off on our journey through memory lane. We're going to start off with the most recent and I'm going to go back and try to think like what's the first one that made me cry up until now. So this book follows the story of Kath who is starting her first year of college. She's having trouble with her relationship with her twin sister and she's worried about her dad and she can't like get away from her roommate's friend Levi. So it's a lot about like the struggle of her freshman year of college, but I have no idea why this book like messed me up so bad. Literally I was reading it and I've read another Rainbow Row book that I liked better than this one. I read Carry On and I like adore that book, but this one just like got to me. I have no idea. Something about I like really related to the main character in a lot of ways, which I know that some other people didn't have that experience when they read the book and like that's fine um but something about her just like oh oh my god i was a mess i was a mess but let's keep going the next book on the list is one of my earlier reading memories and it's also one of my most vivid memories so this book is harry potter and the deathly hollows so i love harry potter i'm not unique in that way uh, a lot of people love Harry Potter I got the seventh book the night it came out at Borders RIP and I basically read it through for 24 hours straight and one of my most vivid memories is sitting there at 1 in the morning the next day with it open like reading the last like 50 pages sobbing like uncon inconsolably crying and one of my favorite things to do when people come over is to like whip that book out and be like, do you want to see my nine-year-old tears? And I just think it's like so funny because there's like tear marks in my book. And it's just like the feeling of like coming to the end of the series. I just, ugh, it like really messed me up for like, I was so upset, but I loved it so much, you know? It's one of my favorite Harry Potter memories. The next book that I remember crying about is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I did a book report on this book when I was in fifth grade and I'm this book kind of follows the story of four sisters in New England during I believe the Civil War and their relationships and their love for each other and other people and stuff like that and I don't want to say what it is that made me sad um, because it's like kind of a spoiler if you haven't read it which you should it's a really good book but I was a very upset fifth grader and I remember my mom had to like comfort me but you know it's not all bad because when I did the book report there's two characters named Laurie and um, Joe and I was doing this report and halfway through like my presentation to the class the class was like wait Joe's a girl and Laurie's a boy and I laughed so hard I actually got points taken off for not being able to finish my um presentation with a straight face so if that tells you anything about me then i don't want to know what it is the next book on the list is my sister's keeper by jody picult so this story follows um a girl whose sister has leukemia and whose parents kind of expect the main character to give her kidney to her sister after having already spent her entire life like donating plasma and donating blood and doing all of that stuff to help her sister and this book kind of follows her trying to reclaim her body and her familial like complications and tension and i read this book when i was visiting my grandmom in florida so i was sleeping over and there was like 55 and up community and they had a clubhouse with a library room so i got the book from there and it was like 
in the middle of the night and I had snuck into the bathroom to read it because I knew that if I had the lights on I would get in trouble. So I read it in the bathroom until like 2 in the morning and then went to bed and like cried myself to sleep. And it was also one of the first times I ever remember really, really loving a multi-perspective book. But like, I just think that's like peak, peak Morgan is like on vacation, reading in the middle of the night and then crying herself to sleep over a book that like she wasn't even supposed to be reading in the first place. Like I, I don't know how to explain myself like better than that. But maybe I will because there's a couple more books on this list and I cried about all of them. The next book on this list I got as a gift for my bat mitzvah and it's it's a hard hitter guys it's called Love Story by Eric Siegel or Seagal I don't really know how to say his last name and this book follows the story of two college students who are like opposites he's from a very wealthy family who like sponsors buildings at their college and she's a scholarship student who wants to like fight the man and go into education and it's about them meeting each other and learning from each other and falling in love and their relationship and it is genuinely genuinely one of the sweetest best most authentic like love stories I've ever read and it is like heartbreaking it messed me up so bad that every time I thought about that book for too long in the next several years I would cry and I would like tear up and get like genuinely upset it was so good and I haven't read it since then because I just didn't know if I was ready for that experience um I do want to reread it again soon and I would also beg if you're interested in that in reading this great amazing love story please read it because I've literally ne never met anybody else who's read this book and so I have nobody to talk about it with like at all. I've literally never met one single person who's read this book. So please. The next book is a little bit, it's kind of obvious, but it's The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And I know some people felt like that book was overrated and I definitely can see why they think that. But I am, like I said, I'm an emotional girl and I read this book while I was on a camping trip with, I don't also don't think I need to explain what this book is about. Like does anybody not know what The Fault in Our Stars is about? But um, I read this book on a camping trip while I was with my family and I finished like the last hundred pages standing behind our tent because I didn't want anybody to look at me. And then I went inside the tent and I laid down in my sleeping bag and I like cried for 40 minutes. And then my mom peeked in and was like, Morgan, are you okay? We're gonna go for a walk. Call me if you need me. And I didn't move for another hour and it was just like traumatic and it wasn't traumatic but oh my god that book like messed me up emotionally but honestly that wasn't even as bad as the movie that movie I cried literally from the title card to the end this movie started and I looked at my dad and I was like that's the font from the book and I like melted into a puddle of snot and tears and it was a struggle the entire movie was a struggle for me to just like stay quiet it was really really embarrassing but you know it was a time and then my family was like let's go to Applebee's so it's one in the morning and we're at Applebee's and I'm still crying and my mom is like you know they're fictional, right? And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> Why did you make me come to Applebee's? And I'm, I'm really getting off track. Let's reel it back in. Anyway, The Fall in Our Stars, John Green. I've never read another John Green book, and I don't know, maybe I will, but that one was like a lot. The next book I'm going to talk about is also the only other one that I have like physically in person, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book follows the stories of um, the Iliad as if Achilles and Patroclus, I don't know how to say his name, Patroclus, uh, are in a relationship and like in love. And this is, this is one of my favorite books of all time. I read it about two summers ago and I couldn't put it down. So I brought it to my internship with me, which ended up being a huge mistake because I cried at my desk and it was very uncomfortable. So yeah but this book is like so beautifully written and every single sentence just like stomps on my heart 
like severely there's actually a twitter bot that's called the song of achilles bot that every like i think four hours tweets out a quote from this book and sometimes they're like whatever just like a random sentence but sometimes they're just like a sentence and i have to like pause in my scrolling to like recollect myself but oh my god oh my god damn so that was the last book on my list that made me cry. I know I've cried about more, but I literally like cannot for the life of me remember them. But I do want to give a special shout out to Dear John because I didn't actually read that book by Nicholas Sparks. Um, I read the first like the last like 50 pages because my friend had that book when we were like in middle school and I just wanted to see how it ended. And then I watched the movie and there's a different ending between the book and the movie, right? And I was like saw the movie it was we were watching it on TV and I started like sobbing and my mom was like why are you sobbing this is like a sappy like hopeful ending and I like was like it's different from the book and cried for another 30 minutes so special shout out to dear John so I didn't cry about the book but the book kind of influenced why I cried about the movie. <laughs> oh, my dog just sneezed on me. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be it. That's everything I have to say for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I entertained you by recounting some of my not as great moments, but I really like, think it's funny to talk about all the times I've cried about just like stupid stuff. Like, if I can't laugh at myself, then that would just be a mess. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.